Whether you are building a personal site or a creative agency portfolio, having a clean and engaging work page is kind of a must. Now, we have already explored plenty of sliders and carousels on the channel which you could use to showcase your projects, but sometimes you just want something simpler to build but still visually striking. The site you are looking at was actually featured as site of the day on awards back in March 2022 and the scroll animation on their work page really caught my eye. As you scroll, the projects slide into view with a staggered reveal, tilted, timed and super satisfying to watch. Perfect for catching attention without going overboard. So I thought this would make a great scroll effect to have in the collection, something you could easily implement on any kind of portfolio or even just an image gallery to add a bit of flair. Over the weekend, I recreated it from scratch with just HTML, CSS, JavaScript and GSAP. Honestly, it's always fascinating what you can pull off with just basic JavaScript and a simple scroll trigger setup. In this video, I'll walk you through exactly how to build this scroll triggered animation from scratch, step by step. If you find these kinds of rebels helpful, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects, and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into the code. Let's kick things off by adding a basic header just to give the layout a bit of structure. I'll drop in an h1 for now just as a placeholder. Next, I'll add a section with the classwork. That's where we'll be dynamically loading all the project items using JavaScript. And finally, I'll wrap things up with a simple footer at the bottom. Again, just some placeholder content inside for now. That's all we need on the HTML side. Let's move on to the styles. To get started, I've already imported the Mandrove font from Google Fonts, one of my go-to choices for clean and modern interfaces. Now first, I'm starting with a global reset to remove default margin and padding from all elements and make sure sizing stays consistent. Now the body, I'm applying the Mandrove font, setting the background to a light shade and the text color to a very dark gray, almost black. Then for images, I am setting width and height to 100% and using object fit cover to make sure all images fill their containers proportionally without stretching. For the heading styles, I have kept it simple. The H1 gets a large font size with slightly negative letter spacing to pull the letters in a bit. The H3 is smaller and tighter, still bold enough to stand out. And the paragraph gets a clean, readable size, some weight for legibility and just a tiny bit of negative spacing to keep things compact. Now let's move on to the layout blocks. For the header and footer, both span full width and have a fixed height of 400 pixels. The content inside is centered using text align center and align content center with some padding all around. This gives a nice breathing room at the top and bottom of the page. For the footer specifically, I am using flexbox to position things. We justify content to space between so the two lines of text sit on opposite sides and align items to the bottom edge. Now the main work section, this is where the animated content will go. I am setting its position to relative, giving it full width and height and adding some padding. Inside, I am stacking the rows vertically using flex direction column and spacing them out with some gap. Also adding overflow hidden to clip anything that might bleed out as we set initial positioning for the project items. Each row inside this gets full width and uses horizontal flex box to place two items side by side with a bit of gap in between. The work item itself is also a vertical flex container with some internal spacing between the image and the copy. Inside that, the image wrapper gets an aspect ratio of 4 by 3 and overflow hidden to crop anything spilling outside the bounds. Lastly, I am dimming the paragraph text slightly using a medium grey helps create a little visual hierarchy beneath the bold project title. Now just a quick media query to make things responsive. Below 1000 pixels, I am reducing the gap sizes slightly for both the work section and rows. Then inside row, I am switching from horizontal to vertical stacking and the footer also gets adjusted. We stack the text vertically and align everything to the left instead of spreading it out. That's it for the CSS setup. It's super clean, minimal and does all the groundwork for the animation we are going to build next. Let's move on to the JavaScript. Before we jump into the script, let me quickly show you the list of project items we'll be working with. I've created an array called projects and it's just a bunch of objects, each representing a single work item. Each one has a name, a short description and a path to an image. These are what we'll be generating dynamically later and dropping into the layout using JavaScript. 
You can totally replace these with your own content, images, names, whatever fits your project. All right, now let's move on to the fun part, wiring it all up with JavaScript. To start with, I'm importing a couple of things at the top. First, I'm pulling in our project array. That's the data we defined earlier with the name, description, and image path for each work item. We'll be looping through that in a minute. Then, I'm importing GSAP, and right after that, the scroll trigger plugin since we are going to trigger animations as we scroll down the page. And finally, I'm importing Lenis. This is a smooth scroll library I always use. It's lightweight, it works great, and it plays really nicely with scroll trigger, which we'll set up next. Now, I'm wrapping everything inside a DOM content loaded event listener. This just makes sure the DOM is fully loaded before we run any of our JavaScript. Inside that, the first thing I'm doing is registering the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. This is required anytime you are using any of the extra plugins that GSAP provides. Next up, I'm initializing Lenis. This part is directly from the Lenis documentation. You might have noticed, I usually keep it exactly the same in every video. So here, basically I'm creating a new Lenis instance. Then I listen to the scroll event and tell scroll trigger to update whenever the scroll position changes. That way, the animation stay in sync with the smooth scroll. I also use the GSAP taker to manually call the Lenis request animation frame function. And then I disable lag smoothing, so things stay perfectly responsive. That's it, smooth scrolling is now active on the page. Next, let's bring in the projects dynamically. We'll start by selecting the main container where all the work will go. This is the section we added earlier in the HTML and it's where we'll append all project items using JavaScript. Next, I'm defining a small helper function called create work item. This function takes a single project object which we are importing from our projects.js file. Inside the function, we create a new div using document.create element. We assign it the class work item so that all the styles we wrote in CSS earlier get applied automatically. Then we fill this container using inner HTML. We structure it into two parts. The first part holds the image. We use an image tag and we set the source and alt attributes using the project's image and name. The second part is the copy. It contains the project title in an H3 and a small description in a paragraph tag. Once this entire structure is built, we return it so we can reuse it anywhere we want. Next comes the actual loop where we place all the projects on the page. Now just for this demo, we use a for loop that runs twice the number of original projects. So although we have 10 projects, we'll loop 20 times. This is a trick to make the scroll longer by repeating the same list again. It gives us more rows to work with and a longer scroll experience without needing more content. Inside the loop, we start by creating a new div and give it a class row. Each row will hold two work items side by side, just like we planned in the CSS. Next, we calculate the two items to show in this row. We use the current index and use the modulus operator to wrap around the array if we go past the end. This ensures we don't get any undefined errors. It keeps looping through the same list cleanly. Then we create the first project item by calling the create work item function and passing the correct project. We append this to the row. Next, we check if there is a second item for the row. This check ensures we don't go beyond the loop size. If yes, we create that too and append it next to the first one. Once the row is complete, we add it to the main work container. And that's it. By the end of this loop, we have multiple rows, each with two project items, all built dynamically from the data file, fully styled and ready to animate. Alright, now let's animate the rows as the user scrolls. First up, we set an initial position for every project card. We move them far down off the screen so they are not visible when the page first loads. This gives us a clean slate, we'll animate them into place as we scroll. Next, we go through every row one by one. Inside each row, we grab the two project cards sitting side by side. Now, for each of these cards, we figure out whether it's on the left or on the right. We do this using a simple index check. If it's the left card, we rotate it slightly in one direction. And if it's the right card, we rotate it the opposite way. This tilt creates a kind of visual tension. It makes the animation more interesting when they slide in, just like we saw on the original side. We also set the pivot point for the rotation to be dead center. That way, the cards rotate cleanly from the middle rather than swinging from a corner. Now comes the scroll logic. 
we create a scroll trigger for the row. This trigger keeps watching that specific row on the page. We tell it to fire when the top of the row reaches just past the middle of the screen. That's usually the moment when the user's attention naturally lands on it. When the trigger activates, we animate both project cards at once. We bring them up into place vertically and reset their rotation so they sit flat. We also give the animation a soft easing to make it feel smooth and natural. Finally, we stagger two cards so one moves slightly after the other. This still adds rhythm to the animation. It keeps the scroll flow feeling satisfying. And that's it. Now each row of projects animate beautifully into place as you scroll. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.